world leaders, corporate giants, top academics, they're all coming together in Davos, Switzerland today. It's the start of the 54th World Economic Forum. And security is very tight at the Swiss ski resort as those international elites begin to arrive. A number of key politicians are going to be there. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, key Middle East leaders as well. But uh, it's the economics of things front and center, the daunting global economic forecast. That'll certainly be of interest to central bankers. Mark Carney, the former Bank of Canada head, one of those who's scheduled to talk today. But to no real official Canadian representation in all of this? I think the biggest risk uh, we face is that we lose hope and that we lose trust. Trust into our institutions and particularly trust in our capability to shape a better future. Covering Davos for us from our studio is Scott. Welcome back. Thank you. That whole question about trust, eroding trust, hence the theme of the summit this year. Yeah, that's a huge theme. And it comes in four main branches as far as how to try to rebuild trust. And they say that there's not enough trust in institutions, in government, in corporations, etc. But there's four main pillars here, and that's is achieving security and cooperation, what they call it being in a fractured world, also creating growth and jobs as well, as well as looking at artificial intelligence and what this means going forward as a driving force and more really of a benefit to developing countries, uh, 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 to developed countries rather than developing countries, I should say, and also the environment is in here as well. But there's worries about a slowing economy and there's also rooms for optimism as well. For example, about 56% say that we're going to see a weakened economy this year. Will it be a recession? Will it be just a couple of bumpy months? We don't know. 77% of business leaders believe that we're going to see a better jobs market going forward and also 70% see interest rates and inflation coming down. So that's positive. But being a world economic forum, this is a corporate business meeting going back since the beginning of the 70s and it represents corporate interest which is also political and uh, economic and that's why there's 50 heads of state 300 ministers 150 or 1500 business leaders all getting together to build that trust Heather going forward and this will be a few days of meeting uh, as it is every year this time a lot of wealth concentrated My in goodness. Davos and yes. so uh, leading into that Oxfam's come out with a study that talks about an issue that we always talk about when we when we speak of the World Economic Forum and that is the concentration of wealth, Scott. Yes, yes, it's huge. And every year it's getting larger. Oxfam, which just represents a charitable organizations, calls this out every year. And they have these publications that come out every time during the World Economic Forum as well being held. But they're saying it has become too powerful, that there's too much money concentrated in too few hands, and that there should be some sort of tax instituted mm -hmm. to equal out the, levying, uh, the, the playing field here. Here's the director for economic justice for Oxfam in his words as far as this growing inequity. Since 2020, not only is billionaire wealth unimaginably up, the world's five richest men, their wealth has doubled since 2020 to now over 800, over $800 billion combined. And at the same time, 60% of the world, it's like nearly 5 billion people have been made poorer. And the numbers go on. You know, a billionaire is now either running or is the main shareholder of seven out of ten companies. Also, the world could get its first trillionaire, Heather, in the next ten years. And so lots going on here. One corporate interest meeting, but also the other side of the equation saying, is there too much money in too few hands? 